So many people are afraid of rejection of failure, but without failure, you have no success. What was the one that stung the most as far as failures? What stung the most, biggest failure, I had a TV show called The Big House, got picked up by ABC. They told me that we were gonna do 12 episodes, flew me down to New York. Um, this is the biggest news ever. I'm about to be rich, holy sh I'm 22. I got a TV show, I'm writing, executive producing, starring in the show. You know what, no, I'm not just gonna go down there by myself. We gotta bring the cast. They said, nope, Kevin, we only flying you. I said, well, I'm gonna pay for the cast to come. I took my own money, flew them all down to New York. Get to New York, put on my suit, people taking pictures of me walking out. This is the best thing ever. Holy sh, I'm famous. This is what it is. I get to the upfronts. Upfronts are where they announce your TV shows. It's a slew of shows, they're announcing their time slots. I'm next, they're about to announce the big house. Somebody puts their hand on my chest and says, Kevin, wait. They talk in the earpiece. They said, nope, I'm standing with him right now. I'm like, what's going on? What do they want me to do? You know, they want me to go on the other side or something. And he goes, okay, I'll tell him. They canceled, they're not gonna pick you up. Uh, you gotta step back. And I was like, wait, that don't sound right. Literally that fast, they sent me home. They were like, you gotta just go home. TV show got picked up six months later for six episodes. The third episode's aired, they canceled the show again. I got the show canceled twice in a six month period, which has never been done before. I booked about three more pilots, got canceled. There was a show called John Stamos' show. He was a publicist and they wanted me as a series regular. The show was going great, ratings were good. Put me on the show, show got canceled. <laughs> I'm now just sitting out here doing nothing. I ain't had no money. Uh, borrowing money left and right. I decided to say, forget. I said, I'm just gonna do stand up comedy and focus on my craft. And I slayed the road for about five years, doing the same circuit over and over again. What I had to understand was that you, you're not in competition with, with anybody but yourself. I had to understand that if I'm going to stay true to what I feel that I can do, then I need to be the one to convince myself that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. But a lot of people can't, don't have that bounce back. That's why you don't have a lot of a lot of people that you know make it to a, a certain successful point in life. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people, um, a lot of people can give up. It's easy to give up. It's the easiest thing in the world to do. All right, man, I'm, I'm done. I ain't going. I ain't gonna keep going. Yeah, the I don't best, feel like going to work. The I'm one, done. yeah, man. It's easy. It's very easy. But what's hard is going. Yo, yesterday I got nothing from working as hard as I could. Nothing happened from that. I'm gonna do the same thing again today, but I'm gonna try to go harder. That's the hardest thing in the world. What sparked the idea to do to do stadiums? It was watching these performers, Beyonce's, Jay-Z's, Justin Timberlake, Taylor Swift. You look at all these musicians, and they go out and they put on these big productions, they put on these big shows. And I was like, nobody does that for comedy. You know, everybody, everybody does the same thing when it comes to stand-up comedy. They come out as a microphone and it's a curtain. You know, so I said, what if I make my shows an event? What if I put a production behind my shows? What if I bring a different level of creativity to stand-up comedy to almost make it a rock and roll-like event? And it was a vision that I had that I shared. Some people didn't understand, which made me go and say, fuck it, I'll, I'll do it myself. You know, that's where having the, the mindset to literally gamble on yourself, do what you want to do, always comes in handy because sometimes being a visionary isn't something that everybody can identify with. You know, sometimes people only see one way and down one street. I saw a street that opened up into so many different paths and different lanes, and I just wasn't afraid to take the chance. And the football stadium was also groundbreaking. You know, I don't want to do something and not be known for what I did in my generation. I want to stand out. So why not try to make history, which is why I did the football stadium. You know, 53,000 people is not to be frowned upon, but what you gotta look at is a comedian has never done it. So it was all about making a stamp and an imprint in today's generation. Here's, here's what I've learned though. I think the people that have made those mistakes and that have went through those crazy changes within this business are, are people that have put themselves in a position to not grow. I think you go through it at one point, but then you go, oh, sh this is bad. I messed up one time, I don't wanna mess up again. I went through my period, I got my DUI. I was out, I was drunk every night. I was chasing different women every day of the week. I did that. I saw that it got me nowhere, and then I got focused, and I saw where getting focused got me. So why go backwards? You're supposed to progress, you're not supposed to digress. The man that I am today is a much more developed man than I was yesterday, and I just don't see myself 
wanting to ever lose that. I mm-hmm. want to continue to be a dope example for what people can look at and go, wow, look where he came from, look at where he is now. People got choices. I, I hate that people act like they don't have a choice, you know? You got a choice in any and everything you do. Here's one thing that I'll say to your listeners, and when I say it, just think about it. Do you know how much energy and time it takes to be angry? Do you know how much time it takes to hold a grudge? To really muster up the energy to hold on to a grudge. I don't like you. Every time I see you, I gotta let you know I don't like you. I don't like you. I, that's energy. Right. That's Feels energy bad, that I'm throwing, I'm throwing all this stuff. I'm throwing all this stuff your way. And that's energy that I could use to go into something else. Like I, when I think about my time, I think about my energy. I think about my efforts. How much time and energy do I really have? And how much do I want to put into stuff that's not going to affect me on a day-to-day basis? It's just negative, just nonsense. Nonsense. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't have the time for it. That's why the negativity that, the negativity that I have received was fine with kindness. Any entertainer with longevity always gets the question of what now? Oh my God, Chelsea, you had a great show yeah. today. What now? Right, right. What, 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 what are you gonna do now? What now? Oh my God, last season was great. What now? What are, you, what are we gonna do now? What do you wanna do? Chelsea, your last stand-up tour was amazing. What now? It's a question that you should never stop getting, but you should also never stop having an answer for it. So I made it the title because in all of my stand-up, I, I've put my life and my life experiences in it. You've seen me grow from grown little man to seriously funny, to laugh at my pain, to let me explain, to now what now? Well, I'm always trying to outdo myself. So I pose the question for everyone else, what now with you? I know what I'm doing, I know the direction I'm going in, but I love to inspire and to motivate. So that question should be a question that everybody gets after school, after work, after any and everything you do, what now? And it's just big, it's just so simple, but yet so complex. I don't think people really put a full understanding into the meaning of the answer to what now. It should just be ongoing. So my career is ongoing, just like the question of what now. And I think we all take body blows in the entertainment business. You, there's always something that happens that makes you go, oh, like, damn. Like there's, a, there's, there's moments where you gotta take the knee. Lucian was the first person to put me down to where I had to take a knee. He was, he was basically, he told me that I needed to find something else to do. You know, it was that blunt. I got off stage, I had a great set. You know, granted my material wasn't sure. great material, I'm new, I'm green, but I had a great set. The crowd enjoyed me, and I thought that I was going to the back to talk to him about coming to the comic strip and doing spots, and instead it was just, I don't see it, I don't see this being your craft. Um, you know, I, I, I think that you should definitely look into doing something else because this isn't, this isn't it, this isn't, this isn't for you. And that's the first time that I heard that, but I had a guy like Keith that I was so close to that I told him, and I'm expecting Keith to be like, damn, if Lucian said that, it's, it's yeah. something. And Keith was like, ah, Lucian. Like he was so, it was so nonchalant and it rolled off his back. And when I saw that, I was like, I was still affected by it, but I was like, man, I don't know how he's acting like this is no big deal. This is me, this is my career, it is a big deal. Then we get down to the cellar and everybody there is just, so what, whatever. And we all were so vicious to each other and we all were so mean to each other. But what we really did was prepare each other for the word no that could come at any possible time. We made each other comfortable with the fact that we were, we were okay. We're gonna be okay. One thing that you better stay true to in this business is relationships. You know, you're gonna meet a lot of people. And in Hollywood, everybody appears to be real, man, but it's a facade. You gotta be a great character and a great judgment of character. You know, everybody loves you when things are going great, but you really get to see who you are and who the real people around you are when things aren't. And those people that you can tell are real, you hold on to. You know, you stay true to those relationships because there's gonna come to a point where you go, damn, what do I have out here? What substance do I have out here? If it's not a party, if it's not a nightclub, if you're not in a relationship, what matters? It's only gonna be about a good five or six people that actually matter. And those five or six people are gonna be there for you whenever you need them. And the favors that I called on, those are long-term relationships, man, but I don't have many. 
You know, I got friends in the business that are really my friends, but I pride myself on the 10 to 12 that I have because they're genuine. They're real. Everything else just comes off as, a, as an associate. It's something that moves when you move in a high and by. Those real ones are real for a reason because when you call, they respond.